What's going on internet? IG back again today and today's video is all about updates, updates, updates. There's been so much that has come out in the Linux world in the last week that I thought, you know what, it's probably worth making a video to kind of recap some of the stuff that has been going on. And also I'll take the opportunity to kind of update a little bit on uh, on projects that I'm working on and, uh, and you can be looking forward to on this infinitely galactic project. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's talk about some rolling releases. Um, there was a couple of rolling releases or semi rolling releases that had snapshots come out in the last week or so. First of all, I want to talk about Solus because uh, that's what I'm running at the moment. And, um, and I started the year running uh, on Solus. That was my primary kind of go-to distribution. And, uh, and they've actually um, recently released a, an ISO refresh uh, that is more up to date with, uh, with everything that's been going on in the Solus project. Now, a lot of people have, uh, have been asking for an ISO refresh fresh and uh, and I would probably count myself as one of those people um, main reason was that uh, back when I was running Solus and it was working pretty well for me um, but there was some packages I was wanting to try out some apps that I was wanting to try out they weren't available on Solus and they didn't look like they were going to be so I ended up switching away for a while and then realizing that uh, in order to come back into the Solus territory I would have to run a bunch of updates just after installing uh, the the distribution not only that but in earlier versions of Solus with the kernel that came out of the box there was quite a few things I had to tweak in order to get my hardware running um, just right so basically it boiled down to me going it's too much effort to switch back to Solus so I'll just give it a miss um, and now the ISOs are all refreshed funnily enough at version 3.9999 uh, and it's really just a tongue-in-cheek way of saying that Solus 4 is right around the corner. So they just wanted to do one last ISO refresh of Solus 3.x and uh, in gearing up then for Solus 4, whatever that brings to the table. So whatever desktop environment you're choosing to go to, um, you can jump on their blog and have a look at what changes have actually been made. But most of it is just bringing all the packages up to date with what we're sitting at now. So we get a really recent kernel 4.18.5. Uh, which brings a bunch of great hardware support for some of the newer um, AMD stuff, uh, specifically the, the huge AMD processor that uh, dropped a short while ago. Um, obviously, they've just made a couple of tweaks and changes to the GNOME and the, and the Mate release, and obviously Budgie is their flagship, so that's obviously going to be all up to date and polished and dandy. Now, I'm not going to review Solus because I've already done that before, but what I will say is that out of every Linux distribution that I have uh, kind of jumped between in the last two months, Solus for me is consistently uh, the one that requires the least amount of tweaking. Now, especially with this ISO refresh, there was literally nothing that I had to tweak, and it and it took me like half an hour to just install all of the uh, all of the apps that I wanted. Um, on here and and the other thing is is that while the while the app center um, or sorry while the software center isn't the most highly populated um, it I would say it's probably one of the most curated so when you go into graphics it's not just an endless list of packages and apps that you can download and install it's actually meaningful good well like well tested good quality software and uh, and I really appreciate that about Solus the fact that it is kind of semi curated now it can bite you in the butt a bit if the uh, if the development team does Decide that a particular app that you might want uh, is is duplicating uh, something that's already there, or that it doesn't fit with Solus, or you know, there's there's a, a list of criteria that apps have to meet before they will be accepted into the software center. But I I, I honestly do like this curated approach because it means that I know I'm not going to be installing an old uh, depreciate uh, de deprecated deprecated depreciated package um, that is you know going to slow down my system or somehow uh, mess things up. So I appreciate the the curation there. Um, and, you know, honestly, this, I have barely tweaked this at all. I've changed the wallpaper and like I said, installed the apps and I'm good to go. Um, and I really appreciate that. So, uh, so that's Solus. Solus, uh, Solus 3 with their ISO refresh is always good news. Moving on, KDE Neon. KDE Neon is one of uh, the projects that I've been keeping a close eye on for quite some time. And it's finally, finally updated its core to 18.04, uh, the Ubuntu LTS release. Now this means again, better hardware support out of the box. And, uh, and it also means just a lot of the, uh, a lot of the extra packages that aren't KDE are a lot more up to date now. Now, obviously three years from now, uh, Ubuntu 18.04 is going to feel old or two years from now, sorry, it's going to feel old, but KDE on top, uh, which is obviously what they're trying to showcase, is never going to feel old. 
because uh, you run the latest stable release of KDE and the KDE applications through KDE Neon. Um, so definitely worth checking out and there are plenty of good videos uh, on this refresh of KDE Neon uh, with the new 18.04 release. So I'll link some in the description below if you want to go check it out. Um, but again, with all of these mini, uh, I guess, uh, updates or releases, and we're going to talk about some betas as well, uh, as you can see in the tabs at the top here. Um, there, let me know if you want me to deep dive on any one particular one. Uh, now, again, I've already done deep dives on Solus and I've done a deep dive on KDE Neon earlier this year um, while it was still based on 16.04. But again, just the ability to have a more up-to-date KDE desktop uh, at its core with a lot of the you know system level stuff is uh, is is great to see and uh, so yeah let me know what you think and uh, and if this deserves a video in and of itself then uh, then great I'll do it my own personal take or my own personal opinion on KDE Neon I did run it for a while um, honestly I love Plasma Desktop I think Plasma Desktop is so polished and functional and and detailed and it gives you so many great options uh, without overcrowding you my only gripe is so many of the core KDE apps uh, definitely not dolphin dolphin is amazing but there are some uh, there are some apps in the KDE applications that that feel dated or clunky or kind of lagging behind in terms of either design or functionality and so that's why I tend to lean towards the GTK side of things um, just because I feel like they do a better job of, of uh, providing apps that look nice that work well um, and uh, so yeah I think once uh, once more of the core applications of KDE have been updated uh, things like ocular and Gwenview and uh, and maybe the contact person information suite all of those once they are sort of up to scratch with just how good KDE Plasma desktop is I'll be all on board okay moving on we've got a beta release beta 4.2 of uh, Linux Lite now I'm usually quite hesitant to to kind of talk about yet another Ubuntu derivative um, but Linux Lite has honestly uh, that's that's the category that I put Linux Lite in to begin with uh, like years and years ago um, whereas it's it's proven that there actually is a, a a particular niche that this distribution can fill um, so if you have an old machine hanging around or more importantly if you know somebody who's got an old machine that doesn't require too much from their computer and just needs an operating system that'll uh, be a lot lighter on it than uh, your classic Windows bog then this is the one to give them now uh, again this is a beta so don't give them this release but uh, as the Linux Lite team edge closer to their full point two release it's worth checking out that uh, that they're just adding a few refinements and uh, and chipping away at making a higher quality distribution so I thought it would be worth shining some light on it um, again it is based on Ubuntu but it uh, it uses a very lightweight desktop environment and tries to use lighter weight uh, or at least more versatile applications by default so the um, the system requirements for it are very very slim, and uh, but it still looks you know relatively nice and polished and modern, and uh, and it is very accessible for new users. So Linux Lite 4.2 beta definitely go get some uh, get some virtual box time, send some bug reports, and get on board. Uh, the other one is Fedora 29 beta. Um, again, Fedora doesn't need really any introduction. Uh, it's Red Hat's playground essentially, and uh, and most of the most of the new features coming to Fedora 29 is going to be upstream stuff. So GNOME 3.30, um, which the biggest um, inclusion for that that I've been hearing around uh, the place is the fact that they're trying to uh, get flat packs integrated a lot better into the software center in in GNOME. And uh, the reason behind this is that uh, at the moment. Um, decentralized package management means that it's uh, depending on what you're using whether it's snaps or flat packs it can be a little bit difficult to update those uh, update that software whereas uh, KDE the plasma discover software center it has worked in both uh, snap and flat pack um, support in the back end of its discover software manager and so gnome is doing the same for Flatpak, meaning that it will be able to go out and ping find um, updates automatically for flat packs I think this is a whole nother video in and of itself, the whole flat pack versus snap versus app image versus package management. Um, there's a lot of good discussion about that. So if you want to kickstart that in the comments, feel free. But, um, but yeah, I think it's a, it, you know, in terms of what we're going to see on the surface level with Fedora Workstation 29, um, that's kind of the, the, the big stuff there. Um, and then obviously just more up-to-date packages across the board. So there's, um, on the, I guess on the server side of things, there's some more interesting stuff with, uh, when it comes to modularity. Um, 
So, you know, if you're into, uh, if you're a system admin and you're into deploying Fedora and other Red Hat products on, um, on multiple machines, then definitely that's worth checking out. Um, and finally, probably the one that has received the most buzz over the last uh, week or two is of course, elementary OS Juno's uh, beta two. So they fixed a bunch of issues um, and they're still, you know, spitting and polishing away. Um, and, uh, and more importantly, the, the, the app ecosystem is building up or rather updating for app center so that, uh, the, they're encouraging, they're really encouraging the app developers, uh, who have released apps for Loki to go ahead and update those for Juno. And honestly, that's what I appreciate most about elementary as a system is that it's not just focused on the OS itself because the OS honestly is just a shell. It's just, it's just the, the front gate. Uh, if you don't have a, a really great quality app ecosystem, then you're going to be left behind in the dust, which is why I mean, case in point, you look at something like Mac OS, say what you will about how stagnant Mac OS is as a platform and the fact that it's OS hasn't really developed or matured in a meaningful way in a long time, but that doesn't matter because they've got an excellent app ecosystem and that's what keeps their customers locked in to the Apple ecosystem. And I mean, for me, the, the big draw card of, of a Mac is uh, Final Cut. And, uh, you know, and there's a couple of other Mac specific apps that, uh, that are so beautifully designed and so functional that they want to, that they keep you using that system. And I think elementary is, is kind of providing the alternative in the open source world to that sort of uh, model of, uh, of creating quality apps for a quality OS and uh, that puts design and functionality at the forefront. So I really appreciate what these guys are doing. Um, obviously they're also putting a lot of effort into supporting modern hardware, which I also appreciate like high pixel density displays. Um, and, uh, and so they're gonna keep chipping away at bug fixes uh, for all of their apps and, and uh, various um, corners of the OS over the next uh, couple of months, I'm s supposing until they're ready for their release candidate. Um, so definitely, you know, if you've got time to spare, then jump in and, uh, and start submitting some bug fixes uh, or some bug reports and, uh, and see what you can do to kind of help these guys out as they near towards their, their big release. So uh, yeah, always lots of fun and games uh, around beta releases and around this time of year in general as all of the uh, as all of the the big ubuntu derivative projects uh, really spin up so uh so there's always there's always stuff to stuff to do so um yeah if you want to get involved with any of these projects then uh, definitely hit up google and find out how um, so yeah, that's, that's really about it for me. I would love to hear from you guys as to whether any of these particular projects deserve any extra airtime, or you'd like me to, um, jump in and do a bit of a deep dive in terms of what's coming up on this channel. Um, I'm still working on a project to kind of showcase the best apps that the Linux world has to offer. Um, and I'm wanting to do it in such a way where I've got two lists that'll come across in the same video, a list of kind of top five or top 10 apps that people who are using Mac or windows can use as well as a kind of a transition or a dipping their toe in the water to what the open source world can offer, but then also ones that are more exclusive to or run a lot better on Linux and, uh, and to kind of help ease that transition and, uh, and hopefully, uh, introduce some new users as to, uh, to a wonderful, um, uh, to a wonderful open source alternative. So, uh, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that video and, uh, and hopefully, you know, if it's, uh, if it hits where I want it to hit, it'll be really helpful for, um, for open source advocates, for new users, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Let me know in the comments if, uh, again, if I should dive into any of these others, or if there's a release or an update or a beta that I've missed that is worth checking it out. So feel free to suggest it in the comments below, but thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the very next video.